Hey guys, welcome back. It's Jeff West here, the artist for Fable Beard Co. And I'm going to show you my process of coloring step by step. Pretty much it's a time lapse video, so enjoy, and I'll be narrating you through it. May your beard be forever blessed and treasure forever upon your beard. Selecting each kind of person, character, thing into solid colors. So I'll go through and I use the selection tool and draw lines around things and make uh, make it kind of separated from everything else. Add a, I don't usually do this, but I added the, the kind of the red in his cheeks and the pink in his nose and lips here instead of doing it um, afterward. I usually just do all the solids first, but I kind of went out of order here. That's me change it up so I went with like a kind of a light purple I, I actually selected the colors right from the original artwork that I had done of Jack Frost and the marksman so I would just use my eyedrop clicker and uh, sample the color right from the original and then use it on this so that helps now what's weird is I had to restart my computer the other day and there is a tool on here um, like a paint dropper and usually you can just touch the area and it'll fill the color in which helps greatly to get things done quicker and since I restarted my computer it, it just doesn't want to do it now it, it, it only so like fills half the layer or part of the layer so I just kind of had to go in and manually paint a lot of it which is no problem just takes a little longer so I'm going through in here and adding um, icicles to Jack Frost beard um, and his hair and I like the white eyelashes I think it looks kind of cool it looks very chilly I like the color of his eyes too it's kind of a purple blue and let's see so I'm working on the sky back here with uh, a purple with some clouds and then I go back and put some texture in there too which kind of makes it look like a storm got some snow clicking some snow in there filling in the flames from marksman's torch It definitely goes faster when you have the <laughs> the paint dropper tool, but that's all right. So I'm using a different layer for all my solids. It goes right underneath my lines. Uh, add some texture here and some reactive lighting to the ridges and the wood from the flame. So like a lighter yellow in there. And like I said before, I just kind of make things up sometimes as I go, add some different lines and different colors. I sampled the skin tone from the original Marksman art. And just going through and filling those areas in. The very first one I did, he was called, um, was it the Archer? kind of Robin Hood looking dude what was his name Did I get it right it's been a while coming through I love the, this color of gloves that light yellow it's kind of that Indiana Jones thing he always he had those cool leather light yellow gloves as you can see I'm an Indiana Jones freak uh, metal on the arrows and the fabric on the crossbow. I started thinking I was going to do um, kind of a white white fur, but there's just so much light color in this already. Like I went with a more of a warm, warm color grays, warm browns and grays. I think it looks pretty cool. You see how it's not quite filling in there. I'm using the paint dropper thing, but it just doesn't want to fill it all the way. So 
so I'm just touching it. Sometimes it doesn't fill all the way into the line. It leaves a little white gap, so I'm going in and cleaning that up. Bottom of the boots. It's kind of hypnotic. Getting sleepy? No, I'm getting. I'm not getting sleepy. Uh, leather stuff from the harness and the horse. Kind of a brass metal for the bottom, and I've added the same color in the harness there too. I always like to do different colors of hair, not all one shade, different strands of color. It looks cool. I always use a light, very light blue in the eyes because then when you go back in at the end and you add the white highlights, uh, it makes it pop. You can really see it makes it look shiny. If it's just white, then you can't really add that that white highlight that I like. And actually, like if you look at someone's eye and you sample that color, it's more like a light pink or a light yellow sometimes. Oh, now this is where I kind of got it wrong. And when I was talking about the outlines, I, uh, I said that I was putting in the texture from the uh, birch wood, but I didn't actually do that until the color layer. I'm sure you'll see it pop in here for a second. This is my first video for Colin, so bear with me. I'll get better at making these. That's pretty fun. I'm enjoying it. There it is. See? Quick. So then I just kind of, I have that over to the side. So I'm looking at how those, um, those different textures and lines are on the trees. And I'm just taking a stab at it with a gray. Definitely helps. Definitely some of my favorite trees. I love those. No leaves because it's cold. Winter. See, if you had a white fur or white coat, it would just be too much. Plus, I have the uh, the border of the picture all white too. I have a little dark, more dark texture in there. And the trees. So once I usually get all the solids in, then I'll start going in and adding um, a multiply layer, which is like a, a light gray or a light warm gray as my shadow. So I'm going through here. Actually, I did it in reverse this time. I'm doing the highlights first. So I wanted to add a nice orangey highlight from the flame on his, uh, his hood and the fur there. Even I get down there to the horse, so it'd be very reflective that close to him. Some hot spots in the flame there as well. And then I just kind of use a big fat airbrush and I just touch that up with the color I want. And I change that layer into an additive layer, which is glow, add glow. So. Uh, it really makes it look cool. I say cool a lot, don't I? And with the added lighting there, it would be even darker shadow underneath on the opposite side. So you'll see that too when I go in with the shading. Different texture there, so it probably would be shiny if those leather boots. I always liked the horse in um, Tangled. Max, he was a great character. I should have made this horse a Clydesdale. 
Those horses are massive. He is searching. He's got that look. He's holding up his torch, kind of looking around. You have to read the story to know why. It's very well written. Jacob's doing a great job. I love uh, reading his stories and then getting to use my imagination and how I would make a little mini movie poster of the scene. It's really fun for me. Okay, now I'm going through with the shading and hitting the opposite side of where that light would be. And I'm using a light, yeah, like a warm gray. Really makes things pop out. Look a little more three-dimensional, which looks very, very cool. I do this too. I watch some of my favorite artists go through their tutorials and learn things. I'm always learning, watching YouTube videos, learning techniques and styles and different brushes. I download lots of different brushes and try different textures, which is really fun. So if you're a fellow artist, I'd highly recommend if you're not doing it already. That should be close. Oh, I got to put the snow in too. So I'm adding some texture in the background there. It's just like a splatter brush. I think it's called blood stain in the brushes. Just taking some of that purple and bringing it down into the bottom. Now I'm doing this on top of everything. It's a, uh, it's called um, droplet. It's a droplet brush and I just, it looks really good with snow as snow. that should pretty much do it so thanks for watching oh wait there's a little more what do you know just adding a little glows uh, to some of the the snow it just looks looks even better let me add a little pop of airbrush and adding some shading I'll go through and zoom into areas and touch up little places before I call it finished there's where I darken the the line work there on the boot. I changed that color from brown to gray. Sign it and done. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.